beauty. Jack Leach. Now, what's the first thing that comes into your head when I say that name? Underdog? Cult hero? Who's Jack Leach? <laughs> He's a player that evokes many different feelings for cricket fans around the world. But as we'll see in this video, his journey, especially at the highest level of cricket, has had more ups and downs than a daytime soap opera. It's these events and how he handled them which might make him one of the most inspirational cricket players of the modern era. So let's dive right in and look at the story of Jack Leach. Jack Leach's cricket story begins in Taunton, Somerset. Jack was developed through the Somerset Youth Cricket System, a system that has produced some big names for England over the years, such as Ian Botham, Marcus Joscothic and Joss Butler. In fact, Joss Butler and Jack Leach actually grew up playing together, even playing for England's under-15 side at the same time. But this is where their cricket paths would diverge, where it was clear that Butler would quickly become a regular part of England's senior national teams as he got older, Leach's path to the national team would take a longer route. In 2010, at the age of 19, he was playing for Dorset in the then called Minor Counties Championship, while working at a local supermarket on the side. After spending time playing for South Cardiff University, he began playing for Somerset in the county championship. But that spot in Somerset's first 11 for a spinner was not Jack's. He was behind another left arm finger spinner in Ireland's George Dockrell. And later in that season, Somerset also signed another lefty spinner in Abdul Rahman from Pakistan. Jack only played twice that season with best figures of 2 for 39 against Lancashire. He would then go and spend the Australian summer playing club cricket for Valleys in Brisbane alongside Usman Khawaja. It was much of the same for the next few county seasons, where Leach was given limited opportunities to play above Dockerell, Rahman and even Piyush Chola on occasion. It wasn't until 2016 where Leach would finally be given the position as first choice spin option. He showed his pedigree in that season, where he played 15 matches taking 65 wickets at an average of 21.87, second only to Jeetan Patel in the top wicket takers for the competition, and helping Somerset to finish second in that season. This was the point where England's selectors started to take notice, but at a stage where Jack's journey finally seems to be reaching the heights of his old mate Joss Butler, in playing for the national side, Leach was hit with a potential career-threatening issue. But before we get to that, let's talk about Jack Leach the bowler. Jack bowls left arm orthodox finger spin, and instead of being a magician doing different things with the ball, it's more of a case that he does one thing very well. He's not a huge spinner of the ball, nor does he have a variety of different deliveries that he can call upon. Instead, his stock ball that turns away from the right-hander is enhanced through his accuracy and control in the lines and lengths that he bowls. Particularly in the early part of his career, Jack regularly flooded the ball up, which together with his high action, imparted overspin on the ball, giving his deliveries more bounce. With a simple and repeatable action, he can bowl long spells, which makes him an attractive option for a captain and selector who opt to only play with one spinner. Now let's get back to the story. In September 2016, during a routine test by the ECB, a part of Jack Leach's bowling action was deemed to be illegal as per ICC guidelines. In particular, his arm was bent beyond the allowed limit during his delivery. To a cricket novice, this might not seem like a big deal. I mean, just simply change your action. But these changes are a massive deal. A bowling delivery is something that is practiced thousands of times for a professional bowler and it's ingrained into muscle memory. It's like asking a cyclist to just ride a bike a different way. The delivery itself is part of a secret source that makes a bowler good at bowling. There is a chance that a change in the delivery might mean the bowler is just not as good anymore. But more than that, there is a serious cultural stigma behind this charge, akin to being called a cheat or a chucker. And that stigma has stayed with a number of successful bowlers throughout their career, most notably Mutai Muralitharan. Even though bowlers can be cleared from these charges, as was the case with Murali on multiple occasions, they can hang over a play for their career and beyond. For the time being, it meant that Jack's next steps were to work on changing his delivery, remove the illegal parts of his action, and more importantly, bowl in such a way that is natural to him and keeps him performing at a high level. After using the off-season to do just that, Leach spoke to the Guardian on the whole situation. It seems a big thing because it is illegal. The whole chucking tag that goes with it, I don't like that. But I think the improvements I've made in a very short time show that it was a small thing, or that I've worked extremely hard. I don't want to be thought of as a cheat. That's what I would worry about. With this situation behind him, Jack played for the England Lions on tours to Sri Lanka and the UAE. His 2017 season with Somerset showed that even with the changes, he was still as effective as ever as a bowler, finishing the fifth highest wicket taker in the tournament and was very unlucky to miss out on making the Ashes squad. But after all the hard work and that major setback, Jack Leach finally got handed his test debut on March 30th, 2018, playing against New Zealand in Christchurch. 
Although only taking two wickets for 113 runs in that test, Jack finally had an opportunity to cement his spot as England's premier spinning option moving forward. Over the next 12 months, he spearheaded a three-pronged spin attack in England's winning 2018 tour of Sri Lanka, taking 18 wickets over three tests, but also suffered a broken thumb that ruled him out of the England tour of Pakistan. By the time the 2019 English summer rolled around, the main thing, maybe the only thing, on England and Australian fans' minds was the Ashes. For all the drama and huge moments during that drawn test series, Jack Leach would play a key role in perhaps the most memorable day of the entire Ashes series. On August 25th, 2019, at Headingley, England were chasing a total of 359 to win the match and level the five test series one all. Having lost nine wickets for 289 runs, they were in serious trouble, still needing 76 runs to win. But the game wasn't over. There was still one wicket in hand and at the other end, England had their big time player, Ben Stokes. If anyone could pull off this monumental task, it was him. That final wicket in hand was Jack Leach. For this last wicket, England didn't need another slogger at the other end. All they needed was someone to keep their cool, play a straight bat and let Ben do the rest. And for 60 minutes, Jack Leach did just that and got the best seat in the house as Ben Stokes pushed dagger after dagger after dagger into Australian hearts around the world, chasing down the total and winning the match. Leach finished with perhaps the most celebrated one not out of 17 balls in cricket history and a colossal strike rate of 5.88 to boot. As a final gift to Australia, he also helped create this missed opportunity that as an Australian fan, probably hurts the most out of all of it. England would go to New Zealand following that Ashes series and Jack would be presented with a completely new type of challenge. While on tour, Leach would develop a case of gastroenteritis and then a bout of sepsis. To make matters worse, Jack has a condition known as Crohn's disease that affects his bowels and complicated his treatment. His condition was so serious that he was hospitalized in New Zealand for a few days. Speaking on the situation, Jack said, I remember thinking, don't fall asleep because you might not wake up. It was that serious in terms of how I was feeling. I was out of it, really. My blood pressure was dropping quickly, my heart rate was 190, and my temperature was 40 degrees. That's when they called an ambulance and got me to hospital. Once I got there, got the antibiotics in my arm, I started to feel better quite quickly, but it still took a couple of nights in hospital, and I was probably still recovering when I flew back from New Zealand. Although he was picked on that following tour to South Africa, he left the squad partway because he was still not up to full fitness. To make matters worse, his replacement Dom Bess would go on to stay in the side for a better part of a year. And it wasn't until England's tours of Sri Lanka and India in early 2021 where he would get his chance to play again. This would be a tumultuous time for the English side as they struggled to find form, losing four series in a row, including the Ashes in Australia and to the Windies away. And it really brought into question, what was Jack Leach's role in the side? Jack Leach earned his first cap for England on the back of strong wicket-taking seasons in county cricket, but his performances during this time with England showed a trend where he was becoming more of a defensive bowler, trying to hold up an end and not concede too many runs. This is reinforced by cricket stat maestro's CrickViz, who released an article in June 2022 documenting how Jack Leach's bowling had gotten shorter and faster over the course of his test career. Both typical indicators of a spin bowler looking to defend. Whether this was a decision made by Jack Leach on his own, or from the England coaching staff who seemed to loathe playing a dedicated spinner at times over another pace option, it did not do Jack's bowling average any favours, and if he wasn't stopping as many runs as usual, his lack of wickets could be a big reason why he could be dropped. This lack of clarity changed on the 12th of May 2022, the day that Brendan McCullum was given the job as coach of England's test team, and his appointment has ushered in the Bazball era, a highly aggressive type of cricket now played by England. New captain Ben Stokes, the same Ben Stokes that Jack helped to beat Australia at Headingley, empowered Leach with an attacking role and to not worry about the consequences. It's been a nice realisation for me that maybe my ceiling is higher than I realised. Ben is always convincing me of it. I'll say, can we have a mid-off out? And he'll be like, nope. Then I'll get whacked over the top and look around and he'll be clapping and clapping with a big smile on his face. It just made me think to myself, this is so great. As long as my coach and captain are happy with how I'm going about it and it's very clear and easy to follow, then I've not really got anyone else to answer to. This quote was given by Jack after he took 10 wickets against New Zealand at Headingley in June 2022. The new setup has done wonders for Jack's confidence as a settled member of the squad. 
In his most recent bowling innings as I write this video, he bowled another 5 for against New Zealand and Wellington. And as England seek to regain the Ashes at home with a bold new cricket approach, Jack Leach helps form the foundation of that attempt. We as cricket fans are quick to pour praise, even worship the high achievers of the sport we love, as well as criticise players that are having a bad run of games. But we often seem to forget that these players are human after all. They face their own demons, setbacks and barriers just like us. What Jack Leach's story has taught me is that the true test of a person's character is what they do when they are faced with such issues. Seeing a teammate at an early age quickly rise up the ranks while you have to work at a supermarket to keep your dream alive. Finally getting on the cusp of playing for your country only to be pulled up for a suspect bowling action. Being a part of cricket history only to be hospitalized and lose your spot on the team to someone else. At any one of these moments, Jack could have thrown in the towel and walked the path of least resistance away from the sport. But he didn't. Under those glasses and thin wisps of hair lies an example of how determination and never giving up can get you closer to where you want to be in life. And maybe, even just for this one moment, this is more important than how many wickets he got and serve as an inspiration to us all. Thanks for checking out the video. If you enjoyed it, please leave a like and consider subscribing. If you want to see another inspirational story, but this time with New Zealand fast bowler Neil Wagner, click the video in the top right hand corner now. If you want to see how the Perth Scorchers became the Big Bash's first dynasty, click the one below it. There's plenty more videos on the way, but until then, take care and I'll see you soon.